That is awesome. All right, Mr. Flacco, can you take roll call, please? Lori Kaminsky? Here. Tom Jack? Here. Staff Visual? Here. Belinda Grassi? Here. Jennifer Hardy? Here. Can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we had a request to add public comment to the meeting agenda for today, so we did add a section for public comment. Um, anyone wishing to address the Board of Education will be recognized by the Board President. Speakers are requested to identify themselves in their topic, and comments are limited to three minutes. Due to time constraints today, we cannot pass our time to somebody else. We do need to stay with that three minute um, time constraint. So anybody wishing to address the Board today? Yes, I will. So my name is Tim Hickey. Actually, I'm uh, gonna touch on three quick topics. Um, the first one is going to be the Auburn School. I understand that. That is part of your agenda is supposed to be today to discuss the letter to the Auburn Schools. So just this morning while I was over at um, 1922 Coffee and Brew having a coffee, ran into a young lady from the Chardon School District who said she has, her father owns the barber shop over there, her mother um, is a beautician, she has cosmetology in her blood. She said she's now waiting for next week to find out if her lottery number is called into that system. So potentially somebody who doesn't even want to be there could take the place of somebody who has it in the bloodline. Now, equity and equality are obviously two very, very different terms and nobody has a problem with equality. They already have equality over there. Everybody has the same opportunity to apply to that school. What they've done over there is gotten rid of the interview process. Um, and they've gone to a random selection to fill these seats. And what that does for the Riverside School Board is, is it is excluding your most qualified candidates, potentially excluding them if they are not selected. It's probably one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard of as an employer in Lake County. It is telling me that I don't need resumes, I don't need interviews, I just should put out an application and randomly select who is doing that. And, um, I'll be very clear, the, the original complaint came from Harvey with their 46% graduation rate. So very qualified students from your school are getting overlooked uh, into that system over there. Second quick topic I want to cover is the fights at your school. Holy, holy cow. Like my kid is getting videos from kids at your school. I talked to a, a very high up lieutenant in the sheriff's department who told me your SRO's hands are tied. Teachers can't intervene. What is going on here? What are you guys doing to address that? And then um, the third quick topic I want to talk about is how about them gas prices, guys? Oof, they're going to keep going up. How do you think that affects your levy and the construction process on that levy? Now, I've heard you guys tell me that you hired a consultant and put out a report in January. Did he factor in the gas prices? No. Are you going to give both sides of the story or virtue signal and play a victim to distract. Because I saw it on Facebook. I won't identify anybody. But it was directed towards me and another person here. And it has nothing to do with it. It has no place. Playing the victim has no place. All we want is for your entire community to be able to hear both sides and why there's an opposition instead of members of the board just promoting it Basically, what it seems like is so that you have some sort of legacy. Hey, we passed this school levy. Look at this. It's, um, it's something that you need to be aware of and address and get both sides of the story because you're putting a levy up for everybody in this community, not just the people who you want to rally around it. So that is my time, and uh, I hope you guys take that into consideration. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi. Ed Jones. Um, I'd like to read you a letter real quick. Written to the Auburn Career Center Board of Directors. Dear board members, Madison Local Schools recently learned of a change to the admission process for students to be accepted into Auburn's career center, Auburn Career Center's various career technical education programs. Madison, being a participating district, did not receive written information about the new process until February 24th of this year when we requested it. We understand that the ultimate authority on the admission criterion process rests with your board. However, a more open and collaborative process 
would have been appropriate and appreciated. The information we received from your district states that Auburn's only admission criteria are that students meet minimum course prerequisites and live in a participating district. A random, a quote, randomized selection process, unquote, is then implemented to determine entry into Auburn's more competitive programs, replacing time-tested and industry-recognized merit-based criteria such as GPA, interviews, recommendations, essays, attendance, etc. This, most assuredly, will result in less qualified candidates being accepted in place of more qualified candidates, all in the name of equity. While we believe equality of opportunity should be provided to all applicants, processes leading to equity of outcomes are discriminatory and teach our students that studying, having good attendance, interviewing skills, etc., are meaningless as accomplishments, qualifications, and suitability aren't considered. We object to the new admission process and are asking for a more collaborative process where input can be provided by the various participating districts. Riverside, of course, being one. We understand that this decision may have been, in part or in whole, based on input from the Ohio Department of Education. Please provide our superintendent with any documents or emails sent to Auburn employees or officials regarding admission criteria from the ODE so we can understand their input. Thank you for receiving this letter and considering the request. Please contact me with any questions respectfully. Sean Douglas, president of the Madison Board of Education. So I know that's on the, the agenda for, for today for you guys to talk about. Just wondering where you guys are going to come down on that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. My name is Al Adams. Um, the first thing I want to do is thank you guys for answering all the questions I had at the last meeting via email, like you said you would. I really appreciate it. Um, I still stand by and I don't understand. I was looking at it this morning. The website posts on your website near your Facebook page, except for when board meetings are. I don't understand why you wouldn't use that media to also let people know when the board meetings are. The worst case scenario is you have more participation than the same six guys you see at every meeting, right? Um, the other thing is, the numbers you answered my question on, there was a nine, roughly a little over 9% increase um, for a levy to get to the 147. And I just want to go back to, <clears throat> there's a 22% overage right now in real time, 1.9 million over budget in Concord for a fire station for the levy they just passed. So they're probably not going to be able to do two fire stations like they wanted to. Um, the, on, the, the only response to this that we got from any of the three that voted for it was Ms. Grassi, who said in the one meeting you, you had looked into it and that you could hold on to the money for quite a long time if you weren't able to build. That's a terrible idea. If you're going to tax us and take our money, build something. Put a shut up in the back. I don't care. But you can't just tax people and then hold on to the money because it didn't fit the bill. And then the last thing, which I've done a lot of research on, is the Auburn um, admission. In my free time, I read the 1979 Civil Rights Vocational School Act that they referenced in their letter. They cherry-picked half, it was two sentences, and they said that attendance, disciplinary action, GPA, referrals, interviews, can all disproportionately place kids. After that, it says, unless you can prove that these things are important criteria for admission into the school, which I think at a tech center, we can all agree, they're going there, they're learning the interview process to leave, they have something they grade on there called employability, where they grade attendance at a high rate, and if you don't attend that school, um, they won't move you along. So why would they just take all these out and not want to use those as criteria to get into the school because even Amazon's not picking names out of the hat to give somebody a job, right? It's just not happening. The best of my knowledge, their school board didn't know that Dr. Bon Temple made this change. None of the 10 district school boards knew about the change. And that in and of itself is against the Ohio Revised Code that says if you change an admission policy, you have to notify all the 10 school boards and the superintendents, in this case 10, the schools that feed that school. And he didn't do any of this. He made a unilateral move. Madison, the president of the Madison School Board came to the Auburn School Board meeting. Chardon came, school board came to the meeting. There was another meeting April 5th. I know it's on the agenda. I'm just you know, giving you all the information I have. This Dr. Von Tempo changed things. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, Josh Pollock. I have two students in the 
school here and wanted to comment also on the fights. Um, there is a fight page, I don't know if you guys are aware of it, and uh, knowing that uh, we have uh, resource deputies, I know that uh, now you guys are wanting as many as you can get rather than actually doing discipline. I know when I went through the school system, if you got in a fight, you got expelled. And, uh, or excuse me, suspended. And if you got in many fights, then you'd have to find a new school to go to. Um, I don't understand why we're holding the hand of troublemakers and giving them every option to continue to disrupt people that are here to learn. And this has happened right on down from when my one daughter was in elementary school at Hale Road, when she brought a, kitty, a kitten book to school and a kid who was a troublemaker in that classroom told her that he was gonna kill her if she brought that book to school again. My, my daughter was a fantastic student, was excited to go to school. She was super excited to learn and was terrified to go to school. After meeting with the principal, all I did for, here for an hour was excuses for the one kid that was there to cause trouble rather than trying to accommodate all the students that were there to learn. Well, I feel like we're still doing this and whoever your representation is for lawyers needs to get fired because they're not following the law. This is ridiculous. I don't understand why we're asking for additional resource officers when we can take the, the troublemakers and teach them over at the field house. Keep them in a one room. If you gotta go to the bathroom, we're gonna walk there with you to the bathroom. We will cause you to behave and follow the rules that this school has, which leads into additional things. When I was at the last meeting, I can't remember your name, ma'am, but Cheryl. Cheryl, nice to, nice to know, sorry. Hi, Cheryl. You had talked about uh, uh, mental health issues. Well, both my daughters are very uh, well educated and, and read and both dealt with mental health issues when this uh, pandemic came along. Well, this kind of goes right to what you were talking about. I find out at the last meeting that we're going to have uh, critical race theory in our school and I'm not happy to hear that because that just further divides our student base. We've never had an issue with race in this district and I'm trying to figure out why we would take my tax dollars, not let me know as a taxpayer what you're doing with my money. And to your point about having the, the, the exposure to when these meetings are, I didn't find out about this meeting till late last night and made arrangements to get here today. I think I should be getting emails or something to the community so we can all be a part of this. This is our dollars that you're spending and you've had free reign for a decade without anybody coming in, in your way. I know I came to meetings when Common Core was brought to this, which look at where we're at. 10 years later, we're in a heap of mess right now because we wanted to try and remove the parents from decision making and parent raising, rather leave it up to the school. Well, you're not doing a good job by going Time. that route because we got troublemakers Thank getting you. away with it. Any other additional comments? <clears throat> Hi, I'm Chris Weiss. Um, I also support, uh, with regard to the Sovereign Career Center thing, uh, sending a strongly worded letter to the uh, Auburn Career Center uh, Board of Education about supporting the merit process in favor of the equity that Mr. Dr. Bontempo did. I would also like to ask that you call for Mr. Bon Dr. Bontempo to either be uh, disciplined or his resignation asked for or outright fired because he clearly violated uh, the, the, his own policies without even notifying the board. And in the businesses that I used to run, that's, a, that's an offense that you should get fired for. Second item I want to talk about is school discipline and the fights, okay? I'm not going to reiterate what these guys said, but um, one of the things that is not going on here is the teachers are not getting the support of the administration when it comes to the students getting out of line wherever that may be, whether it's in the bathroom, whether it's in the classroom, or whatever. The teachers tell me that they have to send the student to go see their uh, respective principal, and that's supposed to be dealt with. Half the time these students come trouncing back into class with a pass saying it's done. The teacher says, hey, you're out of here for the rest of the class, and the student ignores them. Students are barricading the entrance to the bathrooms when there are fights to prevent faculty from getting in there, okay? These things need to be dealt with. And one thing I want to bring back up is the dress code. The dress code is atrocious, even in the winter time, okay? Not just the girls, but the boys too, okay? You have a stated dress code policy and you're not enforcing it, okay? One of the key cornerstones of discipline, good order and discipline, is how do we represent ourselves when we come to work? Okay? In the military, everybody has to wear a uniform. 
they got to have their hair cut, they aren't allowed to have tattoos that show, and on and on and on, okay? You have a dress code. I was told uh, last fall, Jennifer Harden told me that this was under some kind of legal review. I don't understand why it needs to be under legal review. It's printed, there was a dress code when I went here 40 years ago, and it's a reasonable one, okay? If the students can't dress appropriately, then have some gym clothes, t-shirts, and gym shorts, and have them put those on and go the rest of the day. Make them orange, for that matter. We put orange plates on people that get a DUI. Why not have the kids wear orange clothes when they don't conform to the dress code, okay? That shouldn't be a problem. The last thing is um, the school levy, okay? Talk with the Board of Elections. This school levy can be removed from the ballot up until when they finalize the ballot sometime in mid-March, so you got about a week. I'm gonna ask you guys, okay, please, we are staring potentially World War III in the face, okay? Gasoline prices have doubled. Um, I'm in the construction industry, okay? You, there are many instances in many different uh, areas of construction. We cannot even order materials even if we pay for Thank them you. now, and it'll be a year until we get them, Thank okay? You. There's no way sorry, you can succeed time is in what up. you're doing. Time is up, so thank you. Any other public comment? Can you can I other... my time? No, we can't transfer time today. Okay. My name's Ken Frank. I agree on the levy, okay? I'm also in construction. A relative of mine is in construction, heavier than I am. Not even bidding work right now because of the fact they can't get materials to the end of the year. Prices, who knows what. We have, we have, the government saying we have 7% inflation, but they don't count food or fuel, and fuel is almost doubled. So when you look at that, we're probably talking 12, 15%. Even if a building was desperately needed, now is not the time to take on that kind of undertaking with material costs, material shortages, and not knowing what it's going to cost. Concord residents have just gotten burdened with the new fire station on top of the fuel and the inflation. I think this board needs to really <coughs> reconsider if their time is right on this. What I read says it goes back to a 19, or I'm sorry, a 2014 um, study that has last administration, better economy, pre-pandemic, pre-war, pre-inflation. This board really needs to do its job and consider the effect of its taxpayers on that. And I agree with him, if you've got time to pull it off of the board, it's going to save everybody a lot of time and effort. Look at Chardon two years ago. They had a major issue to try and um, pass a levy. It went down. I do give Chardon School Board a lot more respect than I give this board because when the taxpayers of Chardon said, no, we do not want this school, they did come back the next election and try and sneak it through again. They accepted what the people had to say. They said no. It's no for now. We'll discuss it at another time. If you have time to remove it, it's going to save everybody the time and effort of defeating it because it is just, I can't even say an ignorant time to do it. i got to go a step further and say it's just plain stupid to put that on at this time. Thank you. Any other comment? All right. We'll go to consent agenda then. We have a finance and audit consent agenda. We have a motion to approve the items listed on the finance and audit consent agenda is recommended by the treasurer items A through F. A second. Uh, yeah, I would just like uh, uh, one clarification if it's like Gary, I think you had justice. Okay, go ahead. Second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just wanted to pull out the, the bus purchase and you could just give a little bit of detail so I can understand that a little bit better. I heard what you yeah. said before. Right. So at the last meeting, we approved acceptance of a grant to the state of Ohio of 135000 We approved the purchase of three buses. We had a second grant coming that was tentatively, tentatively awarded, but we hadn't gotten the official letter yet from the U.S. EPA for $60,000 to purchase the additional three buses. The letter came in the day after the last board meeting. So this is the, the purchase. We actually, on the last agenda, approved to go out and bid for three more buses because we bid through the House Schools Council. They do it twice a year. And so we approved to go back out to bid. And then the support came through so we can still utilize the fall bids and that pricing. So this is the purchase, three additional buses using the U.S. EPA grant 
which triggers three different resolutions, one to accept the grant, one to adjust our budget to increase it 60,000 in the, in the in a grant fund to purchase, you know, that pays for part of that, obviously 60,000 does not get you three buses, and then, uh, then the actual purchase. So that triggered those three resolutions, and I was gonna put on the March 31st agenda, but since we had this meeting scheduled today, I moved forward to be utilizing previous bids and I have to go on. Okay, thank you for that, because I didn't fully understand that last time. And, and the letter came in just after. Came in the day after the last meeting, so it would have been a lot easier to just do all six at that time, but you know, they sent me the day after I could get on the agenda. Well, I appreciate that, thank you. Any other discussion? All right, if not, can you call the roll, Mr. Flacco? Uh, Scott Visual? Aye. Belinda Grassi? Aye. Jennifer Harden? Aye. Laura Kaminsky? Aye. Okay. Aye. Motion carried. We also have consent agenda for personnel. Sure, we have a motion to approve the items listed on the personnel consent agenda as recommended by the superintendent, superintendent items A through C. I'll second. Thank you. Is there any discussion on these items? If not, can you call the roll? Linda Grassi? Aye. Jennifer Harden? Aye. Lori Kaminsky? Aye. Tom Heck? Aye. Scott Fischel? Aye. Motion carried. Great. That brings us to the discussion portion for um, the meeting. So, Mr. Heck, you had asked for some discussion on the Auburn Career Center enrollment process. I, I, I did indeed. Um, and I do have a copy of the, the letter that, uh, that uh, the Madison Pre uh, School Board President had sent out. And, and we had talked in, um, in previously about the, the situation with, with what's going on with Auburn Career Center and the, the change and how it, it uh, impacts the, the, our, our student body, frankly, and how this was done without our, without our knowledge and it was a, you know, a fait accompli. And, and I, I don't believe that the interests of Riverside are best served by the, the change in policy and that, that I believe that we should write a letter uh, similar in, in content to, to what was uh, sent by Madison to, to let Auburn Career Center understand and uh, Dr. Bontempo, Bontempo understand that, that this is not appropriate, uh, pro, and it's not an appropriate way to move forward and it is not something that is in, in the interest of the, the students in, in general at Riverside and, and any of the other districts that are associated with with um, Auburn Career Center. So I guess the question I have, and I've been looking for information and like reading different pieces, so I have all these, but I can't find any evidence though that it is negatively impacting our students. So I guess, does anybody have any information that says only this first round, only two of our kids were um, I do. chosen or um, anything like that? Like, do we have any of that information? <clears throat> yes. Okay. What do you have? When you're a merit-based, you're accepting the highest qualified students. When you're a bucket-based, you're taking luck of the draw. That definitely affects But my question is, do we have any information stating during this first round, we had less students chosen than we did the previous round? Well, that I don't know about. Okay. It's, it's just a general approach to merit-based. And so if we're looking at just Riverside, Yep. Um, I think it's a little short-sighted because I think we have a whole community we're involved with. So if we just take ourselves out of the community and focus on us, I think that we're serving our own interests and not the whole community. I think we should be looking at the whole community, all the other districts too. But again, I think our job as a board is to represent all the students within our district and what's best for all the students, right? I so I guess I'm asking, we don't, it sounds like we don't have anything saying this so, so time. But, but let me, so are you suggesting that the, the old process of merit-based was incorrect? No, I'm not, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm asking a question. I'm looking so, for so, information. But, so this hasn't happened yet, but, right. but it does not take a, we understand that the criteria, the criteria have changed. One does not need to have the experience of going through the criteria change to recognize that that is no longer merit-based and that that is negatively impacting, that, that has potential and, and would Potential, I guess potential again. So I guess my question would be, if we have a student that was pulled this time, are you telling me when I read Madison's letter, it's telling me that student is probably not qualified? And I don't know that that's true. What do you mean by pulled? If they were, if they were pulled in the lottery process, right? So a student was randomly pulled from our district in the lottery process. When I read this letter, if I was that parent whose child was um, pulled this time around, 
the letter that Madison sends almost says that they're not qualified. And that kind of sends well, some concern to me. Well, I don't know so that we know I'm that. I'm not so sure the letter saying they're not qualified. I think that I think that what we're talking about is that instead of, in a general sense, um, accepting students that are, let's say, 3.7, 4.0 students in, in general, and then uh, the other way of possibly accepting students that are 2.0 to 2.5. And it, it, it goes back to what, what some people would say, what do you call the medical student that graduates last in their class? Well, you call that medical student doctor. Now, do you want the person, a uh, brain surgeon, when we need brain surgery, having the person that graduated last in their class or first in their class or near the top to do that? Now, now in a medical school, they're all qualified generally, but what we're talking about here is even going below that standard and possibly taking students that don't even maybe really much have an interest in even going to the school. We're not sure that everyone who's thrown in that bucket even wants to go to the school because we don't know what the motivations are. And, and it was mentioned here, the Harvey graduation rate of 46%. You're putting students in there that aren't even graduating that could possibly take spots of people that have worked three and four years to get a seat in the Auburn Career Center. Well, so, let, me, let me add something. I, I want to say an exact example, and you're right. So I, I have both sides of this, right? My oldest is in the EMS program. His grades were not great at all, right? He would have met the qualifications, but he went through the interview process when he first got in. He is insanely passionate about EMS firefighting. That's what he's going to do when he graduates this year. And so the interview process for him 100% worked, right? He was able to go. The point is, when they take away the interview process, you're not just saying only maybe kids who don't aren't qualified are there. I'm talking about the kids that actually want to be there. The kids that want to be there are losing out the, the, the chance. You don't have to be a 3.75 or 4.0 student to be in it. You have to want to be there, and that's a part that's killing me because my daughter also did not get accepted. She's, she got an academic letter last year. She had a really bad first semester this year, but she is insanely passionate about being in the allied health program because she wants to be, her goal is to be a NICU nurse. She did not get in through the first round. But again, had she gone through the interview process, I guarantee you because I, I know my child and how passionate she is about it, I would hope those are the kind of kids that we want in these programs, kids that are passionate about what they want to do, passionate about this program and see that as their path to their future. And those kids are now potentially being able not to get into that program for kids who I know for a fact, because I've got a child in the program who says there's kids in his program who don't want to be there. They just want to be at their high school. So it's an out to go someplace else. And I'm not saying they're Riverside kids. I don't know what kids they are. Actually, my son's the only Riverside kid in his program, so whatever. <laughs> but the point is, with the lack of interview, these kids now, we don't know who's getting it at all. And it, I didn't think well, it has nothing to do with saying that the kids aren't qualified. Because yeah, I'm sure some qualified kids got in the program too. But without an interview process and it being completely random, you are absolutely losing these kids who want to be there and potentially derailing where they see their future going. And that's, I think it's shameful, quite honestly. So Jen, can Jennifer, I, can Jennifer, I just, thank you for saying that because you said it better than what I said. And, and that's what I meant to say, but I didn't quite get there, so thank you. So I'm gonna weigh in with my two cents on this issue. Um, while I believe that the, the process change was probably not done in the best way, um, and I believe that the, the Auburn board or superintendent, whoever, whoever decided to make that decision probably should have let their um, constituent base know that that change was being made and not done at the last minute that was affecting students that were applying for the current year. I don't feel like it is our place um, to be involving ourselves with their decisions um, on how they move forward. And if they decide to change the process, that is within their right as a board and as an administration over there. We are not, while we are members, we, we still have the right to withdraw as members from that um, organization from the ESC and then we wouldn't be able to send our kids there. I mean, we have that as an option. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, they're a public school and, and it is my belief that the public school, as a public school in the state of Ohio, they are there to educate and they have to accept students, um, all students, without regard to things. And I think that by implementing an interview process, they are then trying to make themselves more like a private school. That's my opinion, and I, and, and I will go on record as saying that if we're going to put together a letter, I would prefer that it be some sort of a letter or anything that's going to have individual board member signatures on it. Um, because I don't think I would be in support of putting my name on that. So, 
I just want to go ahead and say that. Okay, so I, and if, if I may. Yeah. yeah. So I guess, to, I guess two, two points. No, number, no, I guess going to, to Mrs. Hardin's comments. So I, I think we have to, if, if we're going to be a society that is based on the principles of America, which is in, individualism, it is, it is merit-based, it is limited government, we need to, to enforce that in all facets of, 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 of our society, including with, with Auburn Career Center. What we can do, and I think what would, be, would have been a far more constructive way to have engaged this, if there's a capacity issue of, of Auburn Career Center, and we were not fully meeting the needs, that, that we could have worked collaboratively to expand the capacity of the programs. We, we did, to a certain extent, we did that here with the, the, the welding lab, right? We've, and, and we have a collaboration with, with um, at least three other districts and possibly four other districts trying to increase vocational opportunity. That would be the way to address the concern, in my opinion, and not arbitrarily change things. But, but Mrs. Grassi, I, going back to, to your point on procedure, I, we, we agree that, that, that very likely they did not follow proper I, procedure in this. That I agree. Okay, I and so, so that, that. That, that is a problem, and, and I am not aware of, of their board approving this. This is just a need. So again, I am gonna go on record as saying I believe the process change was done inappropriately, however, as a matter of record, they're a public school. We don't have entrance requirements, and we are a public school. We can't do that. That's not allowed. And and I, I for one, don't feel like, as a public school district, the, the Auburn Career Center is a public school. They're a public school. They're required. So, so, so just to, to make sure I fully understand, so Auburn Career Center's been around you know, uh, since I went to school here 40 years ago and before that. So were they wrong the, the whole time until this I year? Have, Tom, I have no idea. I'm not on their well, board. And so, I, so, why, so what's what's the point of, of making the change when, when to, to me... I don't the, know. I would ask them. Not, not I, I understand, but, but but I think that's why putting the letter together and at least asking for an explanation would, would certainly be valid. Talking about expanding capacity would be a, a, a valid point. And, 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 and um, Mr. Krasinski, to, to, to your question initially, I, I, I don't think one needs to, to, to have experienced the, the change in process to recognize that, that you're gonna have a different outcome than the previous process or, or they wouldn't have done it, right? So, 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 so and I, I think that, that we, we do have a potential example with, with Mrs. Harden's daughter, so. And I don't think that we have to wait, I don't think a change will necessarily, I, I agree, there's a change, there's gonna be a different outcome, right? But I guess what I'm saying is we don't know if the change is a negative outcome, right? We don't know that yet. So I have no, I, I agree with you on, um, they should have been more collaborative. And I can get behind saying, hey, come to us, be collaborative, let us help you, let's figure out solutions together. I think that's a great op, something that we could say to that board and ask them for that help, right? Um, but I guess what I'm concerned about is putting in there that we know, like this says, most assuredly, which pretty much says we know that, um, we're going to get less qualified candidates, generally, well, I, right? I, I, how can you not? But how, I, how, can, how can you not in, in a do. random sa sa sample? I, I mean, explain to me, because maybe I'm missing something, but if, if you had a, a tier based on, based on merit, and all of a sudden, and, and let's say that, and if you accept that that process is valid, right? And we have, you know, 50, 60s, I don't know how many years Auburn Career Center has been there, but again, at least 40 years, and, and, I'm, and it was it existed before that. So, so what is... What is the, the criteria of of, uh, of making the change, and and of course it's going to impact us. I, and and I so almost as, almost assuredly, the only I'd say that the reason that that's there is because it hasn't happened yet. But one does not need this is this is there's no there is no question that the, the change in policy is designed to have a different outcome. I, right. I, I'm not sure I actually agree with that. Let's face it. At the end of the day, like some of those programs are not not traditional traditional type of educational programs, they're career tech programs, and just because I'm an A student <clears throat> may never make me a good cosmetologist. Like, uh, like it would never, never. Um, Albert's been around since you know, the late like, 60s. Just so you know. I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. So. Ms. Gracie, let me ask you this question. If, if someone had a strong desire to become a CPA, and another person in a math class had very little desire to become a CPA, and there was a lottery as to the next level of class, 
and that lower student that had no desire to become a CTA, CPA got chosen into that, and, it, and it's, it's meant to graduate into being a CPA, and that, and that student that wanted to be a CPA did not get drawn out of the bucket and did not have the opportunity. Do you think that that is the best outcome? So, uh, for the record, CPA is a, is a state licensure, and I have to take a test for that. You have to take a test. That has nothing to do with education. Okay, it's so, just a general Well, I'm just example. saying, you're, you're asking me a question, and I'm saying that is a licensure issue. Um, it has nothing to do with me going to school to be an accountant. There are many people who go to school for accounting and don't end up passing the CPA exam. Well, I'm saying the desire there. If a person doesn't have a desire and they get a seat, uh, where someone else does have the desire and they don't get the seat, what is that outcome? Is the outcome uh, just as good having the person who doesn't have a desire taking that seat and not moving on and not having the person who has the desire get the seat and not being able to move on? Because it appears to me that you're not gonna have a person moving to that next level because the person who gets it doesn't have a desire to do so. The person that did have the desire to do so didn't get the seat so they can't do it. So is that what we're looking well, for? Well, maybe, the, the, maybe, the, maybe the individual who, who wasn't that great or whatever actually ends up to be a fabulous, fabulous business person. Okay, and so I, I don't know that, and you can't, you can't determine the end outcomes by something at the beginning you, you, without giving people a chance. So, so I think, here's a better analogy, I think, or a different <laughs> analogy. It is like, it's like saying to everybody, it's a, it's a licensure thing, but it, it is with regard to the CPA, but it, it's as if you would take away the, the pass grade and you just randomly selected the people who passed. If you took the exam, we're going to randomly select who, that's who not, passed. That's, that's not, exactly what it is. It is, not, it is exactly what it can is. I, can I ask a question just to be, what is the expectation? So if we send a letter to Auburn, right? Say we draft a letter, we send a letter to Auburn. I guess, what is the expectation? Are we saying you need to change this year? Or are we saying... Yes. I, I, yes. I, I would I would be a proponent of, of, of changing this year Absolutely. and I would I would raise the opportunity to collaborate with, with Riverside and I suspect most of the other districts would be open to it as well to expand capacity so that we have equal opportunity but not equal outcome. So then you're at so what let me understand what you're asking is that we ask them to change their policy for the current year, which then affects the people who have already been selected into the programs, fairly or not fairly. And so you're you're asking them to now be affected as well. To change it and say, okay, I'm gonna withdraw your acceptance and I'm gonna to give it to somebody else. Okay. I don't know if they're not done with the selection process yet, so I am not so sure how many kids are gonna be impacted. I know probably some if they're in the middle of it. So what I would suggest to the board, if you're going to send a letter, I'd send it soon. Yeah, the next round is Monday. They're picking the last 10 for each program. Yeah, so 20, they, 20, so 23 they programs? The first 10 seats for each class. So for March 15th. March right, 15th. so 23 programs, yeah. right? Correct. So, it was. so another 230 kids will get chosen. Yeah. And I want to say they said of the was 460 seats, over 600, 700 applied. And for example, my son Ben applied for the architecture program. 16 applicants turned in their applications by the stated deadline. Okay, they didn't pick all 16 of them. They had a lottery for 10. The six remaining, which my son is one of the six remaining, has to wait until the 15th to find out, which is after the deadline for classes here and at our uh, Lakeland Community College. And uh, he's got a 4.175 average and, uh, and a real passion for engineering and architecture. So, you know, what this is doing, Ms. Grassy, is it is, it is denying people who are the best qualified from an opportunity to get the seat and perform. And our whole society is built on the best qualified people. And I'm not I'm not denying that. I'm just saying that they are a public school. I don't know how much input we have into that process. And well, Dr. Bon Temple violated their stated policy without telling anyone. He just so unilaterally did it. Again, okay. sorry, I, I'm sorry. I and just this is how every that. vocational school does their admission process. Mm -hmm how they used to or the, the way they way. used to the no used no to. one does a random drawing that I've heard of in the state of Ohio it is not this is how vocational schools typically operate there, there is a I'm so, I don't mean to interrupt <laughs> I, I've been at the Auburn meetings um, Mr. Bontempo because he gave me a 20 minute lecture on equity when I was the only one at the school board meeting he said that there is a group um, of schools that are vocational schools that are doing it not all of them but there is others that have gone to the lottery system okay. But the vast majority do but, not. Yeah, it's, it's some kind of a split. But I think, Ms. Krasinski, to answer your question, kind of, 
Um, the way I expressed it to the board, because they were in, in, in the interview process, you know, the grades aren't that big a part. When they did the interview process, like my son did, it's a collective. They're looking at the interview to see if you're interested. They look at your attendance. They look at your grades. You don't have to be the cream of the crop for grades to get into that school. Let's be honest. Years ago, when we were in school, that's not what that school was designed for, right? But now you have this influx of students. And yes, the ultimate solution is expansion. I stood in front of that board and told them that I would get every business in two counties to support a levy to expand that school. That's the truth. As an employer, I need people to employ, and I can't find them. But I don't want people that maybe just skated through that didn't really want to be there and they're going to be subpar. The market has set that place. You can go make 21 bucks an hour at Amazon or Walmart or wherever you want. But to your answer, Mr. Krasinski, they kept getting hung up that people were there. And there was over 80 people at their meeting, just to so understand. People responded. We spoke for over an hour individually. The board let us speak as long as each person wanted to. Former students stood up there and cried about it, that they worked so hard. I told them, I'm not upset that my daughter didn't make the first round of lottery because I just don't think that's fair. What I think is fair is if you told me my daughter didn't make it because there was 20 better qualified students at, based on their process, I can accept that. If my daughter was 22 out of 20, I'm fine with that. That's a fair process. That's real life. That's what's going to happen when they go out into the workforce. And I believe vocational schools and what I've looked at, they do have different criteria, not for a straight public school, um, as far as the rules in which they operate. They have an entire admissions criteria in there for vocational schools only. And furthermore, public universities, they interview, you write an essay, you have to you know, get accepted into the school. So. Real quick, thank you, I'm sorry. I, I, I apologize for interrupting, it's just. Um, I guess for me, I'm not saying I'm not willing, I'm, I'm willing to send a letter. I guess what I'm trying to say though, I think as another board, we should be saying, hey, we're, we're, we're willing to collaborate with you, we wanna help you through this, we've been hearing from our public, we know they've been hearing from their public, like more of a help find a solution than say, because again, I'm, I work in an industry of change, that's what I do, I, I'm a certified change manager, I'm a process manager. I mean, that's my whole job is making things change, right? So I get it. They made a change. Not that I agree with it or disagree with it. I don't know at this point. My point is we should, we, one, we don't agree with how they communicated, right? Because they did it. I think that's fair to say, right? I mean, they, they didn't communicate. Yeah. Um, two, I think we're all willing to have a collaborative meeting with them. And I'm sure Madison, other districts also would be willing to work with them, right? and say, how can we make this work, right? How can we make sure that the process works and that we're helping them get to where they need, right? I don't know what the solution is, I'm just saying. And I don't know, I worry about, will they be able to make a change this year? I don't, I don't know, you know, that's hard to turn on a dime, but you know, we're willing to start working with them as soon as possible, I think. Right. What well, is strange to me is the fact that the Auburn Board is made up of individuals on participating boards. And I would assume, and, I, and I've heard a lot out there, that people are not, other school boards are not happy about this, uh, you know, as evidenced by Madison, you guys are talking. So it, it surprises me that the board members... Haven't done something. Yeah, or inserted themselves in the matter. I, I don't know how they feel about it, but you would think that they would have some discussion or further discussion about it. I, I don't know. Right, I, I would def definitely agree. Maybe that's something to ask. Like, what are you doing? You've heard from a lot of people. You just said the, people the, were speaking for hours. The board didn't know about the change until yeah. parents started complaining. That yeah. is the part of the issue. Yeah, so they've only known about it okay. at the February 1st board meeting they had is when I went to the meeting. And that is when they committed to look into it and find out what happened because that board didn't know that this entire admission change had gone on. Right, so it appears that if the Auburn board didn't know, it would be impossible for all the, all the other boards to know. And there's no time. And, and so this thing's coming up. I mean, the time is running out quickly. And so I, I'd like to add one more thing. I spoke with a, a Dr. Hoadley. He's uh, at the Tolls uh, Career and Technical Center down by Columbus. And I spoke with him yesterday. And so I asked him what they do down there. And uh, we had a nice conversation. And he explained that uh, their process is that they do a first come, first served, but there is a qualification for um, uh, you know GPA and credits and some other things. There's a qualification in there, 
but he said that's that's how that's how they do it and if you just want to back up from that program and, and kind of look at it and maybe put a subjective statement on it typically when uh, Ms. Harden to your point when when you have uh, your daughter that wants to go in and, and she has a real strong desire to go in, she's probably gonna put her application in first day. She did, okay. literally the first day, within the first hour. The people <laughs> that are just gonna be thrown in a bucket that don't really care if they go there or not, are probably not gonna put in their application first day. So that's another option that they could look at. This way you're not just pulling out of a bucket if people may or may not have any desire to go there. And Ms. Grassy, that doesn't take away from the possibility that a person that we all know we all change, right? And as we're growing up, we change and have different desires. Someone might go in with no desire and end up being the best person ever. That can happen. That being said, the people that have worked towards it for three, four, five years are not then thrown in a bucket with someone that just got tossed in for whatever reason. And this first come, first serve thing might be something else to think about or talk about. The problem we have here is there's not much time left. So I, again, I think great ideas to collaborate with them well, right? Like, here's what other schools are done. I'm all for looking at what other people have done that have been successful, you know what I'm saying? But again, I, my concern about the letter is not sending a letter to them. Again, they should have communicated with us. We should have had some kind of notification. We know why that didn't happen, because it sounds like there wasn't communication among well, them, right? It sounds like it was unilateral, be like you inside of Progressive making a decision yourself yeah. without getting approval from They had a whole committee. From your boss. They, they had a whole committee. They had a committee that worked on it for a year, they claimed. Oh, oh really? Not, not, not 18 before. months is what you said, but it was nobody associated with the board. Correct. Yes. Correct. <laughs> but they claimed they did have a committee that worked Now, this though. situation is analogous to when this board, a couple decades ago, fired Earl Bardall, who was the superintendent at the time. Okay? The guy was doing things that were outside the stated policies and, pr and practices of the Riverside School District. And unfortunately, it was just after he'd received a promotion and a new contract. So the board felt they had to go to the extreme measure to fire the guy. Uh, unfortunately, because of that new contract, it cost us like $350,000 to buy out his contract. So Dr. Bontempo did exactly the same thing. He made a decision without telling anybody that's outside the stated policy of the Auburn Career Center School Board, and he just did it. Um, real quick, you said they've been working, because the letter that it looks like painful, is this what's inspired the work? Because it came on December 10th this past year. So I guess I, I guess I'm I was just told by the their, I was told by their, I guess he's, I think he's told he's the executive director of it, that it's, it was over a year that they had They've been made. working on it? Yes. Okay. They said it I think last, that letter came though after. He said at the last right meeting, Dr. Pontempo said, it was just coincidence, the language in that letter, but that was not the reason for the change. They started working he, on it previous. Like, doc, yeah, he, he said that at the last meeting. So just out of consideration, I know um, your schedule changed, unfortunately, and you need to leave by nine. I guess I want to make sure we kind of talk about, are we, I guess I'm not comfortable with the Madison letter. I am comfortable sending a letter saying, hey, we're willing to work with you, we're willing to be collaborative. We wish you would have communicated with us previously. We don't know what the impact of our students is going to be. We don't know what the impact to the community is going to be. I guess there's another thing we can add to it. But I want to. I, I don't want to put anything that assumes that a child that has been chosen um, to um, this heart. I mean, I know somebody who doesn't public speak or speak well. They might not interview well, right? But they're very motivated. Like, I get the interview process because I do it at work. I'm going through the process now trying to hire somebody. But I just want to be careful that we're not saying kids that may have already gone in that lottery and have been chosen, we're not saying they're not qualified. They may very well be qualified. We're just saying that we wish you would have consulted with us about the process. I guess that's what I want to be careful about. Are we talking about the kids that were chosen, or are we talking about the process, how they choose kids? I guess, okay, so let me, put, let me address that. So I guess what I'm saying is we don't have anything that say the process change is incorrect. Mentally, I think we all have assumptions. We all are thinking that it's not going to work out the way they, or he, whoever put it in place, believes it's going to work out right. But there's a lot of assumptions. Do you know why he put it in place? According, to, well, I guess not anymore because I thought it was in regards to this letter, but I'm hearing that might not be true. No, that's what I'm saying. Do we even know what the motivation was? So I think. So let's I ask think, that question. So I think we get down to saying, okay, what is the, what is, what was the process? Why is the process changing? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Why did it happen? And what will the new process be? And I think part of the problem is that, number one, it was done in the dark of night. 
okay? And, and done if, if it's true outside of the ORC, which is another big problem. And, and now you're taking away opportunities from some and giving them to others arbitrarily and by one person's decision uh, without even the governing board approving it. And as I understand it, the board has still not yet approved the change. Is that correct? Yeah, and if that's the case, now the process has changed. Different students have been admitted outside of the old process. The new process has not even been formalized. This is a huge mess. So the letter would be, hey, what are you doing? You need to follow a process. And we're part of this process. And, and so we would like to see you, you know, maintain some consistency. So at the very least, we need to send something like that. Now, now Ms. Krasinski, what I, what I would ask, are there any parts of the letter from that that, that you like? I mean, or I mean, have you kind of redone it? To, no, to I have not. Saying? No, because I wanted to have a discussion here yeah, to understand yeah. what everybody was thinking. I mean, because to me, I think we need to get a letter over saying we're interested, we want to be involved. Yep. You know, something that says, hey, let's talk. some light needs to be put on this Give situation. Give us some answers. Let's talk. Right. Let's... Anything in the dark isn't good, right? Right. And I'm, I'm okay with sending a letter to the board like that. I, I would be in favor of a letter that says, yes, we're not in favor of the process by which you changed your policy in, in midstream, not giving people notice, those kinds of things. Again, I don't want to arbitrarily say that the entire board objects to the new admission process because I'm not sure that that we're there yet. I don't I don't believe we know enough about the processes and how the outcomes will affect students across the community, <laughs> across the ten districts. I'm not I'm sure. not sure I want to do that. So what is your perspective on merit based admissions? At a college level, I think I, they're fine. In and in a in a high school level, when you have kids that are trying to figure out their way in life and whatever, I believe that every student, every student deserves an opportunity um, and, and sometimes kids that you don't think are going to succeed by giving them that one chance they make something of themselves and I think if we take away that opportunity for that student we're doing a disservice. There's, 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 there's I don't think we're taking away that opportunity <laughs> at all. Like I said, I my, just, my son was exactly that person. So he was not doing well. He's still doing terrible I, here. Again, I remember his ideas. But again, Auburn is what his I, passion I is. believe yeah. that the process should take that into consideration. Um, but I don't, I don't know what that process should look like without further conversation with Auburn. This is the first time we've ever been involved in or, or had conversations about what their process is. We're not them, they're not us, and right. you know, typically speaking, we don't get involved in other boards' decisions. And so if we're going to jump into that fray, like by all means, but I believe we should have some, we should have some, some good discussion with them about what that process is. And we were supposed to have that discussion, well, right? And the fact that we didn't, yes, I, I would tell them that that's not proper. We asked for information. That's what I mean. Right. And so, they and were I think supposed to come here. And they refuse to come here right. to talk with us. And I think that's very, I think we can put that. You know, we asked you to come and give us information, and you, yep. we didn't so, get so it. Def I definitely would include that yeah. aspect that we invited uh, Dr. Bontempo to, to come in and talk to the board so we could better understand what was going on, and, and the offer was, was not accepted. Right. And, and at the end of the day, I believe, I believe, Tom, you're right. If they have programs that are reaching capacity and we can do things collaboratively with them to expand offerings and programs or if they want to increase their capacity because there's popularity in, in certain programs then that should be topics of conversation that right that we're having with them that they're having with their member districts I think that's important to be able to offer those types of opportunities to students but I mean I agree yeah the, the, the one point I would make you you would indicate it my, my counter to we should be telling other boards what to do if, if boards were operating independently, if we didn't have overlapping jurisdictions and concerns, I would agree with you. We shouldn't be telling Madison how to run their school district or Perry or Paintsville City or anybody else. But, but Auburn's unique because part of our student body goes there. We have a vested interest in how Auburn Career Center operates because part of our school student body well, is, is participant. But that's because we choose to be a member of the ESC. And, and maybe and so so right. again. So, so that's a choice we have. Right, but un, until until this issue came up, I think we we've, we've been pretty happy overall. I think with with AC, uh, Auburn Career Center's performance. Now that now that we have this, maybe we need to look at other opportunities because because this is just I, 
you know, and I understand your, your caution, Mrs. Uh, 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 Lori. Lori. <laughs> Madam, Madam President. Madam President, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam President. Madam President. Um, but 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 I, it is it is going to negatively. I, there, there's just no there's no other way that you they wouldn't have changed it if they thought they were going to end up with the same outcome. Mr. Francis, do you really feel that happen. a blind lottery is a reasonable way to award educational opportunities to anyone without any regard for the student's prior accomplishment, drive, intellect, or anything? They, they have a qualification. Their qualification says that you have to be on track for graduation, which means you have to be passing your current classes. You have to be on track to graduate. Uh, I, what was the other one? If two, That's it. Two, uh, I think there was another and, one, wasn't there? No, it was on track for graduation. On track for graduation, I thought there were two. I don't remember which. I think the I mean, other one's that they're breathing. I mean, and if you're, if you're, if you meet those stated requirements, I don't know how else to offer those to students unless we have. When there's more applicants than there are seats, you then have to go to a process that gives the opportunities to the people that are best prepared for them. I, I'm, I don't, I don't. So real quick again, I think part of it is also what is the vision, what is the goals of that school too, right? So I don't know Auburn Career. Center's vision goal, what they're trying to accomplish, right? That's part of that vision, right? So I don't know that to comment on what's the right process, to well, be honest again, with we you. We asked them to come here. And yep. they answer some questions. The offer, yeah. So what are we comfortable, I, I think we're saying we can send a letter, we are comfortable saying we you know, offered you to come in and talk to us, give us information, make us knowledgeable, because this does impact our students in some way, right? I think we're willing to say that, we're saying we're asking questions like, why is it changing? You know, what are you guys doing? You've heard from the community. You guys have, they've been there. They've talked to them. So you're not only hearing from boards now, you're hearing from the community. What are you doing? Like, give us an update. Tell us something. And then we'd like well, information. Well, so, so I, I think cer cer certainly feedback that, that. The process? On the process, I, I think that the, the lack of, of transparency, the opportunity to, to work, to expand capacity, <laughs> equal opportunity. Okay. Um, so, so we, we can try to make, but we're we're always there's, we're never going to have perfect equal opportunity. We just aren't. We're always going to be have more likely, almost certainly, have more demand than there is supply. So, so it's never going to be perfect, but we can try to make it better. Um, and collaboration. then collaboration is Let's great. Talk about this. Right, <laughs> right. But um, I, but fun, fundamentally. I, I think that, that we can say that, that we are concerned about the potential outcome of the change to their admission policies to the Riverside student body. Or if we, wouldn't, if we weren't, we wouldn't be writing a letter. So I think we, need to, we do need to weave that element in that there, while it is not proven, it has not been demonstrated of the exact I, impact. I'm not comfortable with that yet. I'm not it, comfortable not, with that yet. So, but it's not been demonstrated, but, but, but that's anecdotal, and I'm not willing to go there yet. Have you but seen the just... testimonials from the, the students that fought hard to get into that program and then what they did with their lives after having that opportunity? Because that's really impactful. And if you haven't seen it, I, I highly recommend you do that. Because I have a child that wanted to be a band director, and she knew this in fourth grade. And she's been working extremely hard. She's been doing private lessons. She was in Cleveland Youth Wind Symphony Orchestra. She's been doing everything possible that she can to get into universities. We've been touring colleges where, because she's in music, you have to audition. And if you don't audition well, you don't get accepted to the I have, college. I have two children who went through that process. So I don't understand how you wouldn't want to, want to keep a meritocracy that we've all been raised in and all of a sudden throw it out the window for a lottery where people aren't. And I understand there are some people that will come out of the fray. But I don't think by de denying people that have worked for many, many years to have that opportunity to trajectory in their lives, knowing what they wanted to do. I didn't know what I wanted to so, do. So Mr. I Pop, I'm, I'm, I'm about, absolutely hearing what you're saying. Please don't misunderstand. I'm not, not hearing what you're saying, but I believe that we, we, we owe them the opportunity to explain their side of what it is that they're trying to accomplish. And without doing that, I, I don't feel like 
we have a good basis. Well, I think they have pretty much said what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. So by not saying it, they've said it. I don't, yeah. think, they, I don't think they've said that to us. Well, no, 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 I understand. Yeah. No, and that's, that's you guys. Right, and that's yeah. what I'm asking so for. I'm right. asking them to come here and say Right, but the, say the that next meeting is Monday. To yeah. us. So real quick, I think what I heard you say, and I might be okay, I want to make sure, I heard you say that the reason we're sending this letter is because we are concerned, we are, it's unknown what the impact our students are. It's not proven. Not it's, proven. It's not proven, but there is concern we're about concerned. the potential impact on our. On our do you disagree I with that? I would be okay with. We're concerned about potential impact. I can live with that. Okay. Right. I mean, in else? the meantime, <laughs> I would like them to come here and again have some conversation with us about yeah. what what their um, what their thought process. And if the board doesn't have a thought process, I'll like like ask Mr. Bontempo to come here because they haven't. They're not aware of it. But at the end of the day, they have to. They have to engage us in the process, and if we are going to take the first step to engage them, I, I don't have a problem with that, but I want them to come here and, and have that conversation. We'll go there, whatever. I just, I, I don't want to be arbitrarily making decisions based on, I, I'm not sure. They but that's what they did. They arbitrarily made a decision. But I don't want to make the same bad mistake they did. Like, I, I want to be better than that. So do we, can we get this accomplished by Monday when the next meeting is? Have them come here that's, and talk with us. Wednesday, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Probably not. Um, that's, that's why it's impossible well, to have them. Right. Well, this, uh, well, let me. We're, let me, we're, let me, we're let me. in an impossible situation wait a because wait of their behavior. Let's talk about it. I, I think we can get. Okay, if we get a letter drafted huh. based on what we discussed here that we feel comfortable with. Yeah, I I agree. So so let me let me let me to to accelerate things. I'm wondering if that we might if we might uh, engage with um, our. Uh, media person to, to potentially draft and do an, an, an initial draft and then, then we could take the, the draft and, and tweak it from there. It, we do want to be careful because it'll have to come through email so let's be careful making sure that that conversation and what that looks like. So um, Nick can we work with you to get something drafted for us? Yes. Are you guys okay if I work with him try to capture what we have here that we said we're comfortable with and then send it out for you guys to take a look at? Yeah, yeah. I, I I think that 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 makes uh, that makes uh, the most sense because I, I mean, the, I, the idea would be to, to take the next you know twenty minutes or whatever it would be and formulate the letter so it's done. I mean, I think the problem is though, at this point, like, I mean, like I, I have to go to work. I gotta you go. Mrs. Right. Bassi has to leave. She won't be here. So. Okay, so yeah. So in the letter, you have to have some type of expression of urgency for the kids. This this. So Around the date. The, pro the yep. problem is, if we leave this table and it now goes email, that's counter to the Sunshine Laws, isn't it? We're, we're so, not so a board meeting outside of a board meeting. <laughs> so, so I, 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 so it is, it is likely a gray area, but but we have talked in public about our intents. It's recorded. It's recorded, and and we we have the the basic um, uh, contents, the the outline of the contents, and and we will make this public. So it is. There's nothing. We've stated our intentions. We don't have the ability to, to complete the letter today, but it is coming. I'll work with Nick. We'll work with, with uh, Mr. Uh, Caroline. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> names are eluding today, but, but, but and we'll make it public. So I, I believe that, that we will have fulfilled, in, in this circumstance, we will have fulfilled the, the, uh, the transparency aspect of this. And I'm, I'm not gonna have it sent until it comes to the board, I'm if you guys with, disagree. I'm good with that, I okay. just wanted to raise it. Perfect. For conversation. Yeah, I mean, as long as you're tweaking the letter and this wordsmithing and make sure the right points come across. Now, if you brought up a new point to add the letter, and all that's, that's, that's That's a whole other story. But you're just kind of tweaking so the letter. So technically, do we know what the points are, or are there going to be new points? We said we would talk about how we're concerned about the potential impact to our students. Um, we do have to put urgency around it since the next drawing is Monday, right? Yeah, it's Monday. Yeah. Because it would be consistent so, with the board we just passed. Which we also don't know how the drawings are done. Right. So right. Did, they didn't tell us how long it was. So there's lack of transparency we of, of the, the change. Which I think we would talk about the lack agenda. of transparency, which is the, the process that we've all. The and yeah. so lack of transparency what they, they, they still haven't stated. Right. 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 And I think I asked, you know, four or five different questions of Jim when 
they sent the initial I mean, explanation right. so of why they had done it. Like how, how is the lottery? So, so, they want to right. Right. so, so but this, this is hard. Did you, did you say that, that we do not understand how what the what the actual selection process is? It's it's. I don't know the random draw of names. I don't know if they're cutting up names and throwing them I don't know if yeah, it's a random so, so, so that's program. We don't. It, do it's you know, not transparent at this point. It's on, on the actual process in place. Another another point is we we. We understand that there, uh, that we all agree with equal opportunity and that we would like to work with, with Auburn Career Center and to the best of our ability to increase capacity um, of, of programs. Um, and I think we would just like to understand the process at the end of the day. Like I think I had asked some questions on, you know, is it random based on size of district? Is it, you know, you get 10 slots because your district right. is twice as big right. as this district, so you only get five. I had asked those questions and we, we were not provided answers. And so, yes, I have questions on that type of thing. If we're going to we're going to be random, <laughs> what does random mean? Yeah. Let's define it. So, um, right. right. I have questions on that. Yeah, I yeah. do. So, so, right. So, if, right. Exactly right. I'll, you know, we could potentially. There's seven different ways to be random. Right. So it's, I mean, by the random process, although it's unlikely, I mean, it is possible that, that no Riverside students are, are, are selected. And how fair would that be? So, right, right, like at the end of the day. Right. Just, we also said just that, again, their process of how they made this change, you know, like. Right. Was that we're not happy with We're that. not happy, yeah. yeah. The fact that they didn't communicate, so, yeah. All right. Why is the process changing? What are we doing? I assume we're like taking the last right. of this conversation over right. half because I've got to go to work. Right. Okay, and so. Nick has it on video, so I can now go back right, and make sure you listen to our comments. Yeah, but I, so I, 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 so again, to your, your valid point about Sunshine Law, I think that, that we have discussed it in public, that, that we have talked about the points you want to include. Now we need a process that is not conducive to, to public setting, but that ultimately the final product will be public. And I think um, just to add to that, not that we want to be outside of the rules, but I think the public has a real strong desire to get this letter delivered. So I don't think there's going to be any concern from the public. We're back today and get it yeah. drafted, okay? Yeah. Any other discussion on Auburn Career Center enrollment process? I know that um, Mrs. Grassi has to leave due to unforeseen work obligations. Um, do we want a motion to table the boardmanship and board expectations discussion? Or just postpone it. Or postpone it to another? Yeah. Can we, yeah. do, can we do that before our next board meeting, perhaps? So let's make, so there's a motion to um, move the boardmanship and board expectations to um, prior to our next board meeting as a working session. Is, that, is there a possibility for people that will be Would anyone want to second that? I, I can make that. That's I can make it. Okay. I'm sorry, what was that day? The 31st of March at our next board meeting. Before that. Okay, uh, did you want to meet before that? Yep, yes. no. No, just no, well, like right prior to the meeting. PM prior. Oh, I see. Okay, <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, let's not get another So we have a motion to move it. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Thank you. So closing items, our next business meeting is now uh, March 31st, 2022 at 6 p.m. and followed by our regular board meeting that's on the um, calendar. So can um, we have a motion to adjourn at 9-11? Oh. second. <laughs> Aye. Lori Aye. Tom Hatch. Aye. Staff Digital. Aye. Going to bed. Aye. Motion carried.